You're almost done. Click the Add to Chrome button, then click Add Extension to continue. Well, praise the Lord. just a second we'll be up and running I thought I was ready but this thing decided to do something different so praise the Lord amen amen so how y'all doing so how y'all doing? Hmm. This thing here is kind of just get completely out. start him over. Let me go ahead on in. You guys doing all right today? It's good to see all of you. Amen. It's going to be okay. It's a good day. No matter what's going on, we know who's in control. Am I right? We know who's in, who's in control. We're just going to follow suit because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Another second here. We will be in the right place. When things are going, when things when things go to going like they're supposed to go, the enemy, which is the devil and his demons, always try to block and stop what God is wanting to do, and what God is doing. So we don't get alarmed about such events. We just prepare ourselves to get ready to go on and do what we have to do. Because we know that all things do work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. And so right now, let's just go and just continue in the flow of things as we are going. Amen. There we go. There we go. Everything's everything's right now. See, you don't you don't get upset when things don't go like you should you just straighten straighten it out sometimes you have to just take your time and straighten things out amen how's everyone doing i'm so glad to have you guys joining me tonight i know it's late at night but you know what it's only tw- a quarter 10 minutes to 12 pacific standard time here in california amen but uh but i just wanted to i just want to just share just a little tonight because we are coming into the time where the body of Christ has to begin to pray like, like never before because there's an enemy that is working overtime trying to destroy the work of God or the, or the children of God. Amen? Trying to discredit the children of God. And we, are, we have to see ourselves as God see us and Hey, sir, how you doing? I am doing good. Praise God from Pakistan. Good. Amen. Glad to have you with us. All the way from Pakistan. Amen. And so we're going to 
tonight we're just going to share, you know, just, just get in the word just a little bit because you see, there's a, a great, great responsibility that rests upon us as children of God. Amen. Because the world is looking for directions and we are the only examples that they're going to see. And so we have to keep, uh, we got to keep things going in the right direction to the best of our ability, knowing that we are not, knowing that we are not in this battle alone. Amen. Because the battle is not ours. The battle is the Lord. We just maintain, we just doing what, what he asked us to do. Amen. We, we're holding our ground. We're holding our ground. Glory to God. Amen. So I want I want to talk about something tonight, just a little, just for a little while, Amen. I, I'm gonna talk about something just for a little while because you see we're in that season and that time that God is looking at us, and it's time for us to begin to it's time for us to to seek the face of God. It's time to seek the face of God. Be that intercessor that God has called you to be. Be that one that that is willing to. Go the extra mile to make a difference in someone else's life, amen. Because when you look at when you look at it, amen. Look, some someone was praying for you when you was when you were still out in the world. Someone uh, had you on their hearts and on their mind, because God put you on their heart and on their mind, and they were praying for you, and you made it out. You made it to where you are today. Just think of those that are that are looking for answers. Those that look for help right now, that are seeking. The, the way out you've made it and now you, it's time for you to to uh help them to make it by standing in the gap for them making up the hedge for them praying for them so that whatever the enemy is trying to do to discourage them to destroy them that they will be able to to see their way out that they will be able to come forth too even though they be tried by fire they can come forth as pure gold amen glory to god Olga, turn this light on for me in here, please. Thank you, Lord. Amen. <clears throat> turn the light on. Living room lights. Thank you. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for this time. We thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. We yield to you right now. Oh, we thank you, Holy Spirit, because you, you, under, you, you have the Father's heart. You have the Father's heart, and you want to impart what's in his heart into our hearts. And so, Holy Spirit, we yield to you. We yield to you, Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, we ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, that the wisdom of God will flow freely that the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and the, the, the discern of spirit, and the, and the gifts of the spirit, the gifts of faith, the gift of healing, the working of miracles, amen, the, and, the, and, the, and the, all the, the, the nine gifts of the spirit. Father, we call upon you now that you would speak to us, that you would speak to our hearts, and we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, because, God, we know that all things work together for good to them that love you and to those who are called according to your purpose. So we bless your name, Father. We thank you that all is well in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you all for joining us today and uh, this morning. And let's pray. Let, 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 let us talk a little bit about prayer. Amen. Because prayer is the key that's going to get the job done. A lot of people right now are in diverse situations and there's an enemy doing everything he can to belittle the, ch the church, to destroy the church, to disrupt your way of serving God, trying to bring you into a place of, uh, of, 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 of bitterness and anger and resentment, amen? Trying to destroy your heart concerning the things of God. And friend, let me tell you something. God wants to show himself strong on the behalf of his people. And, and it's time. And how is he going to do that? He's going to do it through prayer. 
He's going to do through prayer. You might be going through challenges right now. You may be even, you may be even, even in bondage somewhere in your life. I mean, you may be, you may be in bondage somewhere in your life. But right now, God want to show us examples of, of, of one that was in bondage, one that was, uh, was, was, was going through changes. Amen. In the book of Daniel, chapter six, is a, it's a passage here that I, that I, that I like. Amen. In Daniel chapter six. It says, and it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom, note was said, Daniel was first, and the prince, that the princes might give account unto, unto them, and the king should have no damage. Verse number three. Then this Daniel was preferred. Notice what he said. Notice, notice, how, notice how the word of God uh, uh, described Daniel. He said, then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit. Oh, I like that word. I like that. I like that, that statement. An excellent spirit was in him. An excellent spirit was in him. How did Daniel obtain an excellent spirit? Amen. See, this is something that we need to know in order for us to, to obtain the, the, that, 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 that anointing of an intercessor. See, a true intercessor, when God began to work in an intercessor's life, God began to reveal, God began to distract, God began to God began to bring you to a place in Him that you've never been before. How many of you want to go to a place in God that you've never been before? Amen. And so now I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that Daniel was a man of integrity, as a, as affirmed by the, his enemies, because if if Daniel's enemies see him as a man of integrity, just think how God sees him. Amen. See, because they was. I mean, jealousy just rose up in these men's life because Daniel, they couldn't find no error, no wrong in his life. Don't that remind you of someone, amen, that that always did the right thing, amen, even when they accused him and said, you have the, the spirit of a devil in you. He said, I have no devil, but but <laughs> I'm talking about Jesus, amen. And uh, but we see here that God, that God delivered Daniel through a, through a, a series of tests and through a series of uh, of, of illustrations that God gave us here. That God gave us here through the Word. God, that is showing me that God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. God wants to do a thing in your heart and in your life that will cause your enemies. To uh, to take a, a a second look, because you see, when they came against Daniel, Amen. How you doing, Linda? God bless you, Amen. My dear sister-in-law, Amen. But when we look when we look at this, we can see that God is calling us. He said things in in, in motion. Notice what he said in Daniel chapter three, chapter six. I mean, Daniel chapter six and verse number three. He said. Then this Daniel was preferred above them, above the presidents and the prince, because an excellent spirit was in him. An excellent spirit was in him. My God, I, I, I love to have that testimony, amen, in my life, that an excellent spirit was in me, amen. That means that, that to me, that, that, that would mean a lot because that, that would show me that I'm being about my father's business. Amen. You, you know that how many how many of you you're struggling trying to do the will of God and you find yourself coming short. Amen. You find that there's an enemy working overtime trying to destroy your character, trying to destroy your relationship with God coming against you and I mean in every kind of way that he possibly can, he's working overtime trying to come against you. And now you have to understand that the people that the devil may be using trying to come against you, they may not even be aware of what they're doing. Amen. 
But at the same time, you should be aware. You should be able to understand. You should be, you should have enough wisdom of God within you to discern what's going on around you. Amen. You should never take things for granted. When something go to happen around you, you always seek the face of God and you always pray. You always pray. Amen. Glory to God. So now Daniel here, he was a, he was of the he was a church, he was a child of God, but he was brought into captivity with all the other Israelites. He was brought into captivity. In Daniel chapter 6 and verse number 3, he said, and then this Daniel was preferred above, uh, he was pre preferred above the president and the princes the, because an excellent spirit was in him. Amen. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Why? Because he saw something in Daniel that was worthwhile. He saw something in Daniel that he did not see in his own governors, his own government. Amen. And Daniel was of the was of the captivity of the Israelites. He was a prisoner. But Daniel, because of his integrity to honoring God, because of his lifestyle of, of, of seeking the face of God, uh, interceding for the children of Israel, amen, God protected Daniel. God watched over Daniel. God kept Daniel safe. Even when the devil tried to destroy him through accusations, God still watched over Daniel. And that's why, friend, the body of Christ need to become like Daniel. They need the body of Christ needs to start praying for the, the, the nations of the world, need to start praying for America, need to start praying for the saints of God, need to start praying for the for the world around us. Amen. Why? Because when we are found busy doing the will of the Father, God will watch over his word and he will cause his he will cause your enemies to become your footstool. <clears throat> Amen. <clears throat> so we see it that because Daniel was a man of integrity, Amen, and his enemies affirmed that he was a man of integrity because they couldn't find no fault in him. The, his, his, the, 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 the king wanted to set him over them and they were and Daniel was not of their kingdom he was, Daniel was of a different kingdom just like you and me we are of a different kingdom amen we are of a different kingdom Daniel was of a different kingdom amen so now look at Daniel chapter look at Daniel chapter 6 verse number 4 verse number 4 says then the president Sought, then the president and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. Knows what they tried to do? They tried to find something against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they, knows what he said here, but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful. For as much as he was faithful faithful. Daniel was faithful in, 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 in his uh, uh, ministry obligation. See, Daniel was an intercessor. Daniel was a prayer warrior. Daniel was one who stood in the gap and made up the hedge for the churches of Israel that the enemy would not destroy them. Amen. Daniel interceded for the churches of Israel. He watched over them like a like a, a hen brooded over her little chicklet. Daniel was watch. He was a watchman on the wall. Now this is what we call a true watchman, amen. One that understood his calling, one that understood his purpose, one that carried out the assignment that was upon his life without mummering, without battering, without. Anger without resentment. He carried out his assignment. And he carried it out in faith. Hallelujah. He carried out his assignment in faith. Notice what it goes on and said, verse number. <clears throat> verse number verse number four, because they, they, they sought to find occasion against Daniel 
but they couldn't find nothing. Hey, Amen. They couldn't find nothing against Daniel. So notice what notice what it goes on said here. But the but they could not, but they could find no occasion nor fault for as much as an for as much as he was he was faithful. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. There was no error, no fault found in Daniel because Daniel. You know, you ever heard of people say, "Well, they, he just, he just, he just lived by the book. He played, he just, he played by the rules." You know, well, that was Dan, that's what Daniel was doing. Daniel was playing by the rules. He played it by the book. I mean, he lived his life in such a way that there was nothing that people could use against him to 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 turn against the children of Israel. Amen. God had a faithful warrior standing before him. Amen. So now look at verse number five. Then said these men, we shall, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Amen. So now we see how the world have, 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 have how the world is, is plotting to destroy the house of God is by coming, uh, trying to get us to turn away from serving God. Amen. Notice what these men did. These were governors. These were presidents and, and kings and, and so forth and so on. Amen. These were people that was in charge. Amen. These were people in high positions. Amen. Notice what it said, verse number five. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Amen. The law of his God. For you just joining, we're in the book of Daniel, chapter 6. Right now, we're reading verse number 5. Amen. Verse number 5. Glory to God. So now we see that, we see now that why, we see now how, why the world is turning, uh, is, is, putting together all these ungodly laws, amen, to to try to uh, bind up the the, the 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 church of God, the Christians trying to make it a law that if they would be caught praying in any certain place or they would be caught talking about God in any certain place, it would be it would be against the law. Amen. So they can't find, they can't make us stop talking. They can't make us stop, but they're trying to find a law that they can use against us for when we won't stop. And that's what they did with Daniel right here. The same thing they did with Daniel. The world is trying to do what the, the world is trying to do today. Amen. To us, the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. They're trying to do for, to us today, uh, the, the, the church of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now notice what it said, verse number six. Then these presidents, and princes assembled together to to the to the king. Verse number six, Daniel chapter six, verse six. Then these then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom and the governors of the princes and the governors and princes and counselors and the captains have consulted together. To establish a royal statue. See, they are plotting to destroy the man of God. They're plotting to destroy the man of God. And how many of you know that what we're seeing here is a is a is a is a is a type of what the world is trying to do to the church today? Amen. Trying to silence the church. It's time for the church to begin to pray, amen, like never before. These ungodly laws that is being established and is saying that if we would stand for righteousness and 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 and, and preach and preach uh repentance and preach salvation and and and, and preach against these laws that they are passing they said that we are not walking in love they said that we are not that we are not we're not we're, we're not christian they said that we, because god loves everybody yes god do love everybody amen but there are certain things that god is not going to tolerate God called these things that, that they call good, God called it abomination. But the world is saying that it's good today. Amen. But God called it an abomination. People, it's time for us to pray because this spirit 
is working overtime against the church, against the people in the church. Amen. And if we, the church, don't begin to pray like we're supposed to, like we should, folks, we won't have nothing to say when the devil come in and, and kill, steal, and to destroy. He's doing his job, folks. He's doing his job, and he's doing it good. But what about us? Are we doing our job? Are we praying? Are we seeking the face of God? Amen. Like we should. I'm going to put my marker right here in the Bible right here. And I want to turn to the book of uh, <clears throat> Close Shake mm. I think it's Ezekiel. I want to turn to the book of Ezekiel. Glory to God. I want to turn to the book of Ezekiel. Let me just find what I'm looking for first. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel chapter 22. Go ahead and turn that with me. Ezekiel chapter 22. Now let's look at verse number. Let's look at verse number 30. Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse number 30. Now notice the word of God. He said, and I sought for a man among them. You see, and this, is, and this is, we were just talking about Daniel. Amen. But now listen to what God is saying. He said, I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge. Notice what it said. That should make up the hedge and stand in the gap. Amen. And stand in the gap. Before me for the land. Notice what he said now. That I should not destroy it. Now, folks, this is what this is this is this is what this is what Daniel was doing. Daniel, he became that watchman. Daniel, he became that watchman. He stood in the gap over the house of Israel while they was in captivity. He Daniel stood in the gap over Israel. Daniel made up the hedge over Israel. When the destroyer wanted to destroy him, Daniel, he took the burden upon his own shoulder and he stood in the gap daily, three times a day. And he turned, he went into his chamber, he went on his knees and he turned toward the holy city, amen, and he began to pray over the children of Israel. He began to pray over the house of Israel, amen. And he sought the face of God three times a day concerning them. Insomuch that because of his due diligence, the Bible said that there was an excellent spirit found in him. Amen. Notice what it said right here, verse number, Ezekiel chapter 22, verse number 30 again. He said, and I sought for a man among them. God is looking for men today. God is looking for men today to make up the hedge and stand in the gap. Amen. We need to start praying over our leaders. We need to start praying over our leaders like never before. Because see, these leaders, these leaders, they men. They are men and women just like you and I. And they are subject to mistakes. But if we, the church, remember, God moves on the voice of the church. He moves on the voice of the church. If your voice is being, if your voice is going forth toward heaven, uh, uh, lifting up our government, God is going to listen to the voice of the church. Hallelujah. And as we begin to pray for our leaders, as we begin to pray for our country, if we begin to pray for our, the leaders in our cities, like our mayors, our, our police officers, our, 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 our court, our judges, Amen. If we start praying for these people that is in authority, we can turn this situation around. But you know what? People not going to hear. They don't want to hear this because this this calls for them. This is this is work on their behalf. Amen. This is called this this is calling for work on their behalf, and they don't want to be. They don't they don't want to be inconvenient. Amen. 
They don't want to be inconvenient. Glory to God. But I know that if we would pray, glory to God, if we would pray, we will see the hand of God moving upon our cities, upon our land, turning the situation around like never before. Amen. But how many of us will honor God and pray and seek his face like never before? How many of us will actually do that? Amen. How many of us will do that? Glory to God. Now notice what it said in the book of 1 Timothy. In the book of 1 Timothy. And I want us to look at verse in chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Now let's read starting with verse number 1. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1. Because I don't know, this is just in my heart because you see, I've been I've been I've been praying I've been praying a lot lately and and I've been and and I noticed the more I prayed the more the enemy tried to put different things in my mind and and tried to get me to look at different things to to try to get me away from the from from praying trying to get me away from seeking the face of God and I know if the enemy is trying to stop me from praying trying to get me to, to do to look at things or to see things or, or whatever that man and I know if he's trying to get me a man of God I know he's doing the same thing for you out there too amen I know he's doing the same thing for you and so it's time for us the body of Christ it's time for us to to it's time for us to examine our hearts and it's time for us to shake ourselves it's time to shake that devil loose you you got to be you got to be tired of that devil messing with you. You got to be so tired of that thing messing with you that you're gonna hate that thing when he come around you when he go to mess with you. Amen. You're not gonna you you just can't allow this devil to uh, intimidate you. Amen. You gotta hate this devil so much that you will start talking. You start praying. You start seeking the face of God and start telling God, God, I'm tired of this. I don't want this. I don't want to see it. I don't want to participate. I don't want to be a part of this. Amen. God, I need your strength. I need more of you. Glory. Oh my God. Am I hollering? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Amen. But I'm telling you the truth. God wants to deliver his people. Amen. God wants to set his people free. And it's going to take us, the body of Christ, coming together as intercessors. Intercessors. Praying over our nation. Praying over our leaders. You may not like your leader that got that, that, that's in motion, that's in office, I mean. I mean, you may not like our leader that's in office, but you didn't put him in office. God put him in office. God ordains authorities. Not man. God ordains authorities. Amen. And so what our, our job is simple. Our job is to keep them up in prayer so that they will be used by God making godly decisions concerning the, the citizen of the country and of our nation. But if we don't pray, then we won't see godly uh, 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 results, re results coming forth. Because you see, it can only happen if the church is praying, it will only happen if the church is praying. If my people, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin. How many you know there's a lot of sin in the land right now? A lot of sin and people are walking in sin, living in sin, not knowing that God is watching them. God sees it all. But they become so comfortable knowing that that lifestyle that they're living is not a godly relationship, not a godly uh, 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 lifestyle. They've been doing it so long, their heart has become hardened. Concerning the things of God. And folks, this is why we got to pray. Because this young, this generation coming on after us, if the if if we, the, the, the elders, if we don't begin to pray for this younger generation that is coming on after us, folks, we will not see God say, well done. We will not hear him say, well done. Because we neglected 
to make way for them through prayer. We got to pray for our next generations that is coming. If you look at the face of the people, the children of the of the land that is coming up right now, you don't see life in them. They walk around like zombies. And and they are our children's. Amen. They are our children's. And we are acting like It doesn't matter. We act like that is okay. It's not okay for our children. And it's not right that the church will neglect to do their job. We have to pray. We have to pray for our for the next generation. Someone has to be able to pass the baton to this next generation. Someone has to have enough of the zeal of God resting upon their life, the glory of God resting upon their life, the anointing of God resting upon their life, the power of God working upon resting upon their life, that they can pass it down to this next generation. We shouldn't, there's so much that is striving for our attention. Now folks, it's time for the church to begin to pray. It's time for the church to begin to seek the face of God like never before. It's time folks. What do we have to lose? Not one thing. The Bible tells us we need to. God said in in in, a, in a Ezekiel chapter twenty two and verse number thirty. He said, "And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land." Then he said that I should not destroy. And he said, "But I found none." What did he find? If he didn't find someone to stand in the gap. He found a lot of selfish people trying to make their own path in the way that they want to go. Their pride, their arrogance, their selfishness have brought them into a place where they can only see themselves and no one else. Oh, my friend. It's time for us to get our eyes off of self. And it's time to start looking at the generation that is coming up behind us. And it's time to begin to pray like we've never prayed before for the generation that is coming behind us. Friend, if you looked out in the streets lately, have you walked in the malls lately? Have you walked in the restaurants lately? And you not only see the young people walking a path separate from what God would have them to walk but you also see the adults doing the same thing because the devil has blinded their minds because the church is not praying like they should God is calling us. He's bringing us to a place of intercessory prayer. God is looking for intercessors. He's looking for people that will pray. He's looking for people that will that will consecrate themselves. He's looking for people that will every once in a while fast and pray. Fast and pray. Amen. We just coming tomorrow. 
We tomorrow we're ending a 30 day fast. Tomorrow we're ending a 30 day fast. We started on the 27th of last month. And tomorrow is the 27th that we are ending this fast. And friend, we've been praying for you. We've been praying for you guys. We've been praying for all of you. And I want you to know that God is watching over his word concerning you. You are very valuable. But the devil wants you to think that you are insignificant. But God wants you to know that you are very valuable to his kingdom. Because it was for you that Jesus came into this earth and laid down his life that we may be able to stand before God as holy children. Amen. <laughs> so what do you want to do? Are you want you want you want you want to acknowledge that God of Abraham, of Isaac, and Jacob, you want to acknowledge him? And you want to you want to begin to seek his face? Then then that's what we should do, folks. That's what we should do. We should begin to cry out to the Lord. Oh, my friend. We should begin to cry out to the Lord. We should begin to pray like we've never prayed before. We serve a God that is a good God. He's holy and he's just and he's concerned about the people that is coming on up behind us as we should be also. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Notice what it said right here, and, and remember I was talking to you about praying for those that are in authority? And 1 Timothy chapter 2, look at verse number 1 with me. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 1. He said, I exalt therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. For all men. We're talking about those that are in authority right now, folks. God wants the church to pray over our leaders so that they will begin to make the decisions that God would have them to make. Amen. Because if we don't pray for them, we don't see they if we don't pray for them, they, they'll get up in there, they'll say whatever's on their mind. They won't they, they, they won't be they won't be yielded to the Spirit of God. They're gonna be yielded to self because the, the, the church is not lifting them up in prayer. Then once they say something or do something that, that is wrong, then next thing you know, you wanna stone them, you wanna crucify them, you wanna hang them up on a cross, you wanna you, you want to do away with them. And it's all because that you're not praying. You're not praying. And so he said in verse number two, he said, for kings and for, and for all that are in authority, that, they, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Notice what he said, who will have all men to be saved. To be saved. Amen. And to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Glory to God. God wants all men to be saved. He wants all men to come into the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. He's right now interceding for us. He's making intercession for us. And he's saying, that's right. He said, that's right, my son. Tell my people, call my people, summon my people to come forth in prayer. Summon my people to, to, to seek my face and to turn from their wicked ways. Then I will begin to bring forth healing throughout the land as my people begin to pray. Are you ready for God to begin to release restoration in the land? Maybe in your family, maybe in your among your children, amen, your, in, your, in your marriages, amen. Glory to God. 
It's time to fall in love with Jesus again, folks. It's time to fall in love with God once again. Let the love of the Father just begin to swell up in your heart like never before. Hallelujah. He said, I exalt therefore, first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for, for kings, and for, for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in, in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable. And this is good and acceptable life in in all in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. That's first Timothy chapter two. Verse 1 through 4. Amen. Verse 1 through 4. In this passage, Paul reminds Timothy, the servant. That how important it is. And, and how. It's so. It's so. It's so timely that we come together at this time and begin to pray and begin to seek the face of God. Prayer is the first priority Paul said for to all saints. Amen. He said we, we for all saints to pray. And if he if he's if he's called us to pray, and then he said that and then and prayer should and prayer should include all types of prayer, all type of appeal, of supplication, and prayer and intercession and giving of things. All types of prayers that Paul is talking about right here. Amen. Prayer is that prayer is to exalt. All men, including leaders, including our leaders. Amen. Glory to God. Prayer is good and acceptable in the sight of God. So if it's good and acceptable in the sight of God, then why aren't we taking advantage of, of something that's going to cause us to experience an excellent spirit on the inside of us? Let's go back to the book of Daniel, chapter 6, if you don't mind. Daniel chapter 6. Amen. Now Daniel was a Daniel was a, 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 a man just like you and me. He there was nothing special about him. Amen. He had a call, a call of God on his life, and he honored the call of God on his life by interceding for the house of Israel, for the children's of Israel that was brought into captivity. Now notice here, can I can I just can I just show you this one more time in in uh in chapter six and let's look at look at verse number oh my god verse number two verse number two amen and over these three presidents of them of whom Daniel was first that the prince might have a Account uh, may have oh shit, that the prince may give account unto the unto them, and for and the kings should not have no damage. Verse number three. Then this Daniel was preferred above the print above the president, the prince, the, the because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king sought to set him over the whole realm. Amen. Oh my God! When they saw that. Jealousy, jealousy rose up in their hearts. All of them, because see, Daniel wasn't of that kingdom, but they, they, those presidents, those princes, those governors, those counselors, all of those people was of that kingdom. Daniel was not of that kingdom. Daniel was a prisoner. But yet Daniel experienced supernatural favor because he honored God by praying and interceding for the house of Israel on a continuous base. On a continual base. Amen. So now notice what he says right here, because you see, it's a, this is so important. Because you see, Daniel, his own enemies looked at looked at looked upon him and couldn't find no kind of fault against him that they could use. To bring Daniel down from a natural standpoint. So they went against Daniel concerning 
his prayer life. Concerning his prayer life. Amen. Daniel received a death sentence because of his prayer life. He would not stop praying to God. Even though it would cost him his life, Daniel still, even when he knew that the king had signed the decree with his signet, his ring, Daniel went up in his room, up in his chamber, opened up his window toward the holy city, and he kneeled down as he did aforetime, and Daniel prayed. <clears throat> and Daniel prayed. And then these men that, that, that established this law, they knew what time Daniel was going to be praying. And so they came around and they spied on Daniel. Amen. They spied on Daniel. And then they went told the king that Daniel did not regard the prayer, the, the creed that was established. Now look, let, let me show you something right here. I got a few more, I got a few more minutes. I have a few more minutes. So I'm going to show you this right here because it's time, it's time for us to begin to pray. It's time for us, the body of Christ, to begin to pray for our leaders. Amen. Because our leaders can make a difference in our, in our, in our children. Because, see, the laws that have been passed, they're working against our children. They're working against our young people. And if the church will begin to pray, a lot of these laws that have been passed can be overturned. But if the church don't pray, it's going to continue going in the direction that it's going. And the momentum is going to start picking up. Because God is starting to send warnings out. People being caught up. Men of God is being caught up. Children of God is being caught up. Amen. People are being hurt. People are being destroyed because of the the spirit that is that is that is that is in the world right now. That is that is. I'm telling you, folks. We have to pray. We have to pray. Notice what knows what he said in verse number three. Then this Daniel was preferred above the precedents, the princes, the because that excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the president and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, but they could find none occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error fault, error or fault found in him. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes and assembled together to, to, to the king and said thus unto the king, Darius, live forever. King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom and the governors and the princes and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statue and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days save of thee O king he shall be cast into the den of lions now O king establish the decree and sign the writing that it may be not be changed according to the law of the Mobis and the Persians which altereth not wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree verse number 10 now when Daniel knew see Daniel knew that they had signed this decree he knew it he knew it amen he knew that the decree was signed he knew that the decree was signed but he still went on to pray why because he was not intimidated 
by the enemy. He was not intimidated by the enemy. Amen. Glory to God. So verse number 10 said, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his window being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the, the, the king's decree. Has thou not signed a decree? Notice how they came plotting against Daniel. Has thou signed a decree? Amen. That, he, that every man that should ask a petition of any God or man within 30 days save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The, the king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Mobius and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but make it his petitions three times a day. Notice how they came against Daniel. Folks, Daniel was a man of authority in the spiritual realm, and they did not want a godly man praying and seeking God's face on the behalf of the people that was in captivity. Why? Because Daniel had a voice. Daniel had a voice that God would listen to. He had a voice that God would hear. Folks, I want to tell you something. As a child of God, you have a voice that God will hear. But if you're not praying, if you're not seeking his face, if you're not petitioning the kingdom of God, if you're not petitioning the throne of God on the behalf of our nation, on the behalf of the children of God, on behalf of the children of the land, then the voice that you have, even though you have a voice, is not going to amount to nothing. Daniel's voice counted. Your voice counts. Remember how authority is, 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 is released? It's not released through a rod. It's not released through a gun. It's not released through any kind of physical weapon. Authority is released through words. Your word has God's ability in them when you are lining up with the will of God. You are a man or a woman of divine authority. You can declare a thing. You can decree a thing and it shall be established. You are powerful in the eyes of God but you got to see yourself that way because that's the way God sees you and the devil knows that you are a threat. My time is about up. Let me pray for you guys. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice and Father, I pray that this time in the word have been worthwhile. I pray, Father, that there was something that was said that will stir the heart of your people that they will begin to pray and to seek your face like never before. Lord, let not your word fall to the ground, but let your word minister to our heart, to our spirit, oh God, and let us rise up as men and women of God. And let us begin to pray. Let us begin to, to exercise divine authority in the earth once again. And let us see our nation turn around. Father, I thank you for it. I pray, Father, and I release the prayer of faith on the behalf of those under the sound of my voice. Touch your people, Father. Let the spirit of the living God rest upon them. Breathe upon them, Father. And Father, let them come forth as men making up the hedge and standing in the gap 
for the land. God bless you. We love you. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Glory to God. Thank y'all for joining us. You too, Jerry. God bless you.